Perfect timing for a weed whacker start. I think we're live for Vape Church season three, episode two to start. Carrots, carrots, what are we talking about today? Yeah, we we are uh, we're working on um, <laughs> we're we're starting our second episode of the relaunch of Vape Church. So welcome, welcome everybody. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to introduce everybody that's here. Obviously, we we have our um, fearless leader the reason that we are all here we have troy i think if i'm going on the right side we have troy from 420 vape zone um he's brought us all together he's started this whole trend of like coming together putting our heads together so that we have some kind of you know group knowledge together um so thanks for bringing us here troy uh kenny we have kenny from sticky brick labs who has been instrumental in kind of bringing up the the bigger conversation and and bringing vape church to the public um and being being a face for it all so we <laughs> we're grateful to kenny here and then after that we have our production team and uh we have a lot of people that have been working to bring vape church to you uh the last two weeks and hopefully continue for the rest of you know however long the rest of the season whatever we decide to do um, we have Southie, who he was a builder for G43s um, until very recently. Um, but he is our is one of our production team members. Um, everybody here uh, has volunteered their time <laughs> to be here and and make sure that we're um, giving you some knowledge. Um, we we want to clarify, I guess, that this this is a an educational thing that we want to come together and uh, teach you all things. So all the people here volunteering to try to get that together, Southie being the first. Then we have Clypo, who is also here trying to contribute, uh, build the conversation, and help bring in a lot of the uh, comments from, um, from the forums. Uh, so thank you, Clypo. And then in in the background, who you don't get to see, um, is Coffee Please. Uh, she is working really, really hard behind the scenes, making sure we get guests on here, also making sure that we are all prepared and have our shit together before <laughs> coming Hi, on. everybody. I will try and keep them on time if I can. Thank nice you. Nice to speak to you all. Um, you'll probably hear from her in the future. Um, and then uh, we also have Lux um, in the background helping organize some of that stuff. Um, she is not on voice, so. <laughs> but yeah, those are those are just some of our team members, um, people that are working hard to make this happen. So, yeah, there's my long introduction. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to everybody on the 420 Vape Zone forum that participated on the the Vape Church thread this week. They <clears throat> presented some good questions and a lot of good answers on that thread. And uh, I just appreciate people chiming in. It helps us fill the fill our time, and um, and we like to see the knowledge that you guys have. Indeed, so, I want to I want to thank everyone as well. Uh, it's a lot it's a lot to pull these things together. Even just picking topics and making sure that the topic is a something feasible for a group of adults to come together and speak about in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a lot of fucking work. It's a lot of work. It's, it's impossible to do it by myself and vape church wouldn't be a thing as it is right now without without you guys so thank you everyone and everyone involved and everyone watching everyone participating for for all the energy so we're we talking, having fun doing it yeah we're, we're having a That's blast super fun That's great thank you guys. so uh so starting off our episode on glass this week all things glass um kenny do you do you want to start us off on the topic I'll start us off with start? a dab of glass. Okay, yeah. Let's start Cheers to that. Cheers Let's, to that. I say, I say we get a little bit of medicated because yeah, I'm Sunday. running on about five minutes of sleep. I'm sorry. Was so, I supposed to wait for permission to start medicating? No. <laughs> no, by all means, everybody, please roll. And I'm, I'm trying to bring second. us in here. How about that? And then you guys can fill in for me so I get the Medicaid. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is my first Cheers. piece of American blown glass that I bought as a little dedicated dad rig. Oh. Cheers. Oh, nice. That's a nice one. 
So uh, this week we're going to do glass and it's, it's really the basics. This is not um, reviewing glass or, or talking about particular manufacturers or anything like that. What we're yeah. trying to do is, is keep you guys very informed. So we're, we're going to kind of go over the different percolators and different types of glass um, uh, value um, stems uh, joint sizes things like this and we just thought it would be a nice intro to glass we tend to see a lot of questions um, about about particularly joint size china versus us glass or custom uh, heady versus clear things like that so we thought we'd just go over everything we're going to try to touch on cleaning rigs bangers and uh, we just thought this was a good subject. And as we re reboot Vape Church, um, we're going to kind of set this up like this and, and do a thorough investigation of everything in our community. So while last week we started with the Mighty, we're going to take a step back and, and go back to our beginnings a little bit and um, where we came from and the knowledge we have working up to getting vaporizers and getting into this community. And I think that's our, our basic premise for the next couple of weeks. And uh, we thought glass would be a good way to start. And um, I think we all collect glass almost like we collect vaporizers. So <laughs> it's a fun thing. And um, we thought it would be a good topic this week. And I, I think later in the show, we're going to bring a few people on to show off a couple pieces and, and give us their knowledge too, because we certainly don't know everything. So um, we want to rely on the rest of the community and we're, we're, we rely on you guys to guide us and we would love to have people on. Uh, if anybody shows up in the YouTube chat that is interested, that's a glass blower, especially that, that would be interested in participating, let us let coffee know or Lux know as we're going through the show, please. And um, so really I was gonna start with the very first glass piece that I ever got that I still have actually. Does that sound good to everybody? <laughs> So um, I, I appreciate the muting. Thank you. <laughs> um, so when I started smoking in the mid to early 80s, um, it was mostly plastic. Um, U.S. bongs was very big at the time. So it was mostly plastic bongs. And my friend owned a brick and mortar head shop at the time. And I walked in one day in 1985 and saw the first glass bong that I had personally ever seen in a shop and told him that I wanted it. And he set it aside and I came back 25 minutes later with money and I still have that piece today. So I've kind of set my pieces out over here next to me. So it is just a straight tube. <laughs> Thank you for spotlighting me. Um, over the years, it's 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 just will not come clean anymore. I do not use this. Um, the stem actually broke out of it. And, and we will be talking about the difference between stems that are built in and stems that are not. Um, but what I really wanted to show about this piece, first and foremost, I'm a deadhead, so I have a dead sticker on my first bong. Um, but what I really wanted to show was the thickness or thinness of this piece. Uh, we were vaguely talking about this last night. And if I could even just compared to one of our, my sticky brick mouthpieces, you can see the difference in thickness between that and this. And I personally, I cannot believe that I've had this since 1985, considering it is so thin. Um, so I do not use this anymore. It's kind of my collector fun piece. Um, but it's like yeah, that thing has sur survived some, some anything like it. It, it looks so thin. I'm, I'm, I'm actually surprised that it's lasted as well. Have you never, I never cannot, bumped it? I cannot believe that it is still around. I have hit it. Um, I have broken the down stem a few times, but the ring has never broken. And that's what kind of shocks me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's survived. And now I just kind of want to keep it and keep it displayed. Um, I'm almost afraid to use it after seeing the thickness of other pieces. So <laughs> So to be, never be used again. I don't think so. I, I think an, we'll see. We'll see. Say never. I, that's right. I don't never say never. Right. So we'll see. <laughs> so is the bottom, is that acrylic? Um, I am fairly certain it is a can surrounded by an acrylic piece. Uh, that was a big thing in, in early glass bongs. Um, so that's there is a tin can down here that they sunk the glass into and it's hollow down to the bottom. It does not oh. stop at this point. It actually goes about that deep into this okay. piece. 
Um, so I'm pretty sure they just surrounded the glass by something and then built a base around it. Yeah. Uh, so the one thing I didn't say is this is a graphics, not F-I-X, but actually G-R-A-P-H-I-C-S, graphics bong company from Detroit, Michigan. Wow. Um, they existed before the graphics company. I don't think they had anything to do with one another. Um, but they were one of the first glass makers as far as our industry goes. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it wasn't much, but at the time it felt like, oh my God, this is the pinnacle of smoking. Cause I have been smoking out of plastic for the past three years. Yeah. So to me, this was like, oh, the dream, you know? And um, I was kind of the all-star of my friend group when I was younger so, because of this thing. So. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being the first person with a glass piece. Like, right. Within, and and, 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 I'm, and I'm certainly I'm certainly not saying that 1985 was the first. No, glass no. Piece. Even, even that even was the first your, one I saw within your friend group. <laughs> yes. Even, um, yes. That's probably something pretty unique. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I've always to read loved the questions glass. here. I've always loved um glass. Um I can I could sit in a glass store for hours and just be like mm. <laughs> According to Wikipedia, bongs have been in use for 2400 years. Really? It says excavations in Kurgan in Russia in 2003 revealed that Scythian tribal chiefs used gold bongs 2,400 years ago to smoke cannabis and opium. Wow. So we're on the right track. Sounds like they knew what they wanted 25,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys hear the weed eater outside, or, or is that being cut out? I'm not hear. not hearing it. Oh, no, it's surprisingly okay. quiet. Good, good, because it's making me want to like jump out the window and murder the guy. But okay. I'm not doing that because I don't have any pants on, and that would be you get us kicked off YouTube. Yeah, that, that that's another reason that maybe you shouldn't jump out the window and murder somebody on camera. Yeah. Yes, yes that's, that, that's that's why because I'm, I'm live on the internet and everybody would see me pantless. What was um, so? What you you said you you bought your first bong in 1985, Kenny? Yes, sir. Do you remember smoking your first bong? Do you remember like what it was or what it was like? Oh, it was it was rags, dirt weed for sure. That because that's all we had at the time. I mean the bong, not the. <laughs> <laughs> do i remember smoking it you remember what the bong was like the oh. first bong you smoked out of like not the one you bought first bong was probably a little plastic one with like the globe on the bottom kind of with the plastic clip on that made it stand up with the little metal slide with the butterfly thing like one hitter or like wow. triangle shaped bowl thing okay right so it yeah. was almost exclusively plastic when i started smoking and the cool uh, the cool bongs at the time were the ones with tubes going to multi chambers mm -hmm. and um and and something we really wanted to touch on later now whatever is the difference between smoking and vaporizing um i think vaporizing we're looking for less where less is more because you don't want to take the flavor you don't want a ton of glass or a lot of percolation because we want the flavor from vaporizing. When you're smoking, you want to cool it. That's the idea of ice pinches or ice catches and using cold water and things like that because you're actually trying to cool it down. With vapor, it's a very different approach and um, it's almost the opposite. You could do hot water bong hits and it's going to be a much better experience as far as vaporizing goes. Um, I think I think it's why we see such like a the the bongs change over time like i remember when i when i first smoked out of a bong it was it was plastic as well and it was like a, a dual chamber thing and it had a carb you didn't remove the bowl there was a there was a carb well, you could remove the bowl to clean it but you, there was a carb and you just took your finger off the carb and yes. we used to we used to keep rum in it we had rum in it and I, I remember never changing the bong water as far as i mean it wasn't my bong so i don't i didn't maintain it but the guy said he you don't change your bong water you know it's that's that's rum you don't spill it. that's that's gold in there eventually he was going to drink it he said nowadays like i change my bong water daily if not twice a day sometimes i agree with that when i was smoking it was almost a contest to see if you could turn the water into sludge <laughs> yes absolutely right um, i yeah, 
I have some stupid. I have some pieces that are pretty much ruined because of that. Um, but yeah, we would see how dirty it would they would get. Um, it's much easier to keep them clean now. Um, I've learned. Oh, it's much easier. And, you know, it was, like I said, it was almost a contest. It was like, no, we're not going to change it yet. I, I don't know what the point of that was, but young and dumb, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, we're going to drink the water. No, you're not. <laughs> you're going to spill it on the carpet, and then the place is going <laughs> to smell like dirty bong water for the next three months. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where should we start, I guess? Well, yeah, I, I was going to ask you, so do we want to uh, start keep with the first first bong, first glass piece thing, or do you want to go straight into, uh, you brought up the topic of flavor, you know, how much percolation you want, um, do we want to get into that in a little bit, or do you want to go ahead and jump in? Well, I think we, we, we're, we're talking about that right now, how, how bongs have changed, we, we've gone yeah. from seeing like these dual, triple, all these stack chambers. And, wow. and now we're seeing a lot of more simpler, simple bongs. Uh, Kenny's right. Like vape, if you're, if you're vaping through a bong, you don't want it to be complicated. You don't want, you don't want to have a whole, whole bunch of percolation, a bunch of filtration. I don't think that's the reason that bongs are changing, but I, I, it is, it is a thing. It's a good thing for us, for vape users. I think bongs are changing because those complicated ones are both expensive and harder to make for, for glass mm -hmm. makers and in this market, you know? I, th I think we're seeing a lot more thoughtfulness. Um, something we had discussed as we uh, built an outline for this show was um, we were talking about THC through water and, and is it removing THC? And, and we tend to know, because we have a little more experience, that THC is not um, water soluble, so it's not going to transfer into the water. But in looking that up, there's not really studies about it. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, glass makers were vaguely winging it until they found what they were looking for and and when the vast majority of people are smokers what they are looking for is is cooling and, and that's a very different style than what we're really looking for and i think we have seen the rise of smaller pieces less percolation um not ash catchers which is something we will certainly bring up later um, but the multi-chamber thing, like Troy said, um, I, I, the small rigs, especially, I think we've all seen the rise of these small rigs that just a tiny little bit of water, just a little bit of cooling and you get full flavor. And um, I think the glass blowers, the community, people are starting to recognize these things. And I, I don't know that it was there before. It's true. And, and I don't want to, I don't want to change the topic, but in addition to like the cooling, there's also a, a, cooling of of vaping or smoking through a bong it's fucking cool like going from like a joint or a, a pipe and then having a glass piece that blows bubbles and it's got water in it that's pretty fucking cool like non-temperature wise that's that's pretty fucking like i remember the first time i smoked it like through a bong i was like holy shit this thing is a fucking contraption from god this thing is amazing didn't matter what it did it had bubbles in there and my smoke was going through it. <laughs> you know, it was magic. I, I and that's so. existed for 2,400 years. That's longer than the earth, according to some people. That's wild. And it, uh... That's almost as old as my wood sets. It's 400 years older than, than the earth in some religions. Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, I, I'm with Troy. I think it's just fun. I, I, the, in the very beginning of using vaporizers, I was really looking at vaporizers that I could use through water because it's my preference and it's fun. And it, it's just the way I prefer to use. I, I've, as I've moved through the vaporizers, um, I've certainly found the ones I like dry or through a J hook or, you know, that don't need water. But in the end, I tend to always come back to the water pieces because it is just fun. Yeah, it brings that um, extra, um, especially with vaping and like former smokers, it brings that that extra. Like nostalgia? And like release that them. extra step, that extra. Heaviness. 
heaviness. That's what I um, always think that that it provides the heavier hit that that smokers tend to look for. Okay. Well, so the bong doesn't, but it it gives the impression of it. Yes. Yeah. It allows you sometimes to take a picture so because of I the, have, the pull yeah. of the, the bong. I have um, a few dry herbs now. Um, and I really haven't found anything I like through water too much. Um, where should someone start? Um, is that is that something that we should talk about or should we do something else or like, where, where to start should, getting I mean, started with glass glass yeah where should we start with glass i think i think i want to i want to or do we want to do some evolution of like smoking well, think... glass or talk about perks or I don't know. It's it's easier to just start talking about things than it is to actually discuss a, a decision live, okay. live in a stream. Yeah. So we'll just start talking so about I, stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of what we were talking about brought up um, a lot of different topics. So I think we can just zoom in on any of those. Um, okay. Like the <clears throat> you, you mentioned evolution of bongs, right? We've talked about how they've gotten smaller from being bigger, and you know maybe it's because we're realizing that you get a lot more flavor with less water maybe it's it's a trend of vaporizing maybe it's a trend of dabbing um we haven't really talked about dabbing yet but we will um we bangers and and rigs will be something that we talk about eventually today um but i i want to keep with the with the topic of like percolation and so so do we have some examples of bongs that people have? I'm just curious. Do we have some examples of bongs? Because I, I do. Uh, that people had when they were smoking versus the ones that, that they use now for vaping. I wanna, Absolutely. I want to get some of that demonstration. Okay. I yes. will. I got some that I will grab. Why don't you guys demonstrate so I, I get to medicate a little bit here? <laughs> and I, I have brought out a couple of my old ones too. I definitely keep pieces around for when we have friends over that enjoy smoking um i try not to judge although i try to force vaporizers on them <laughs> um but i also understand that certain people are going to do what they want to do and that's totally fine so i i i tend to keep one or two pieces around the house for smoking because i just no matter how much you clean them they don't really get there and and they they tend to not be the best um glass pieces for vaporizers I also keep a, a smoking bong around the house. God, that sound is so loud outside. I, I'm amazed that you guys aren't hearing it. It's 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 like somebody it's reaching in my window and, and sticking an ice pick in my ear. Uh, but I, I keep a, a one of those free bongs from like the Daily High Club or whatever it is, like some some really cheap shitty bong. I just keep that in the garage. So like when somebody comes over and they can't figure out how to vape, because some people just can't figure out how to vape. You know, like they take like the smallest hit from the mighty, like. And it's like no, like you gotta you gotta hit it, and they can't figure out vaping, so they gotta they gotta they gotta hit the smoker's bong, and they're the, that's there's the, that's their simplicity, and they're they're proud of that sometimes, and and that's the type of people we have in our world. But we're not gonna go down that road right now. The smoke the smoking bong in the garage uh, is a simple thing with like a, a little perk, uh, but when when people are choosing vapes, don't I I, I would advise them to not go. Uh, for complex bongs, this uh, would be too something too complex. Yeah, yeah. Um, this um, talking about perks. This is like a a swirl perk, and um, it's got Nash catcher into it. This is an old smoking piece. Yeah, and that's that's kind of the what I think of when I think of smoking piece is like, you know, as big as you can think, you know, with yeah. perks as possible. And then like, if, if you're trying to keep it kind of clean, you've probably got at least one ash catcher. Um, and that adds to the bulk. And, and that was something that people looked for, right? People were looking to build something big that has the most cooling possible. I think you brought that up earlier, Troy, is that back, back when it was smoking, it was for cooling 
and it, people weren't thinking about flavor as much. People weren't thinking about other things. They were just thinking about um, cooling. Or looking cool. A lot of that stuff does look cool, right? I, that looks super cool, what Clive is showing right now. Yeah, that's a beautiful piece. I wouldn't want to clean it, but that is very neat. Yeah. I bet that's fun to make, too, for a glass blower to take a, a long section of, of tube and just heat it up and slowly like work each piece of it and make a creation like that. Uh, I'm very lucky that we have a glass blower involved in Sticky Brick Labs, and I get to go see these things happen. And I, I knew, I thought that I knew so much about glass before I started Sticky Bricks, and I really didn't. Uh, actually getting to get hands on, uh, getting to work on a lathe, a glass lathe just a little bit, and um, having a very experienced glass blower kind of coach me through these things has just opened up a whole new world of knowledge that honestly I thought I had and clearly did not. So um, yeah, I, I can only imagine how much fun that piece would be to bend all over like that. I've seen the ones that are like zigzagged as well, where it's like they're hard bends. Those are cool. Yeah, I got a Zong too, as well. I've it's only uh, smoked out of one, and it this was is... not the funnest experience in my <laughs> in my experience. This is one of the old smoking pieces that I've had that I would say would be one of the most common, a beaker. This would be a beaker style bong. Uh, and since we touched on it earlier, this is a removable stem. So that's the down stem. And that has lines cut in it. And that's essentially what is making the water bubble at the bottom. And uh, that just goes into the beaker base. And then this has a tree perk. Let me get a little closer here. The tree perk. So it's almost a double chambered bong. Um, and we've had this one for quite a while too. This is probably 15, 20 years old. Um, here, I'm gonna mute and so you can actually see it working. We wanna hear it too. Oh, we wanna hear the rip. And I'll leave that on. Oh, I can't hear it though. Zoom like is surprisingly a... good at, at cutting out volume, but it's looks like it's got some chug. It's got some pinches for ice. A little bit. It, it's yeah, it has the, yes, right here. So you could drop in ice cubes and, and we'd put the ice up to here or so. And um, you do have to cut your water level down because the ice just continually melts and it'll tend to overflow. Mm -hmm. um, but for smoking, this thing has been a very good bong for us. It's super thick. It's American made. We had picked this up in Asheville right when we moved here. Um, so this is an American made bong and it's, it's lasted very, very long for us and we're pretty happy with it. And once again, it's not something I'd use for a vaporizer, but something I would hand to somebody uh, with mm -hmm. no problem that I would expect them to be able to use without question. And then the other piece we use and, and Carrot just brought this up. This is the other piece I tend to hand people for smoking. This one I, I do clean out pretty thoroughly because one part of it I do enjoy using for vaporizing. So this would be the ash catcher that Carrots was talking about. So your bowl or your vaporizer would go in here. Um, and the idea is your ash goes into this first area that sits into the actual piece. And so you're pulling through two chambers again, all the ash should remain in here, hence the ash catcher thing. And then this is your main body chamber and your mouthpiece up here. Uh, and the nice thing about this piece is the perks are removable. So this is fairly easy to clean and you're really just left with a beaker. And um, both sides of this one have removable joints. So you can change the percolator on each piece. And it really is one of my favorite pieces. There we go. Super cool. A little gentle. This I is, this is a China glass piece. Uh, so I got to be a little gentle with this one. Um, but it's it's certainly a fun piece. And it's very you functional. Use those with with the vaporizer, would you use the ash catcher and the the main? Uh, if I was maybe doing the double G forty three, something something a heavy hitter, the SSV, I, I'd probably use the double filtration. Wow. Okay. Um, Short of that, no, not so much. It's yeah. just, it's removing too much of the flavor and that's why I vaporize. So I, I don't want to take the flavor. The more water you have, the, the more flavor you're going to remove. One so thing a I wanna... vaporizer is not so much. 
I want to point out uh, there's been a few different bongs shown that were like beakers and then a, a couple other ones that were a little more scientific. Uh, when I'm, when I'm vaping, when I'm, when I'm vape, vape, vapor bonging, I really like the joint and I really like a joint instead of a downstem. Uh, and I want it to be vertical. That way, mm -hmm. if I'm, if I'm resting a, a vaporizer on the bong, it's not at an angle. That way there's no leverage. There's no uh, tension putting on, on a glass joint or on a, on a weld. The weight of the vaporizer is vertical. That way, it's it's supported best for the for the vape and the bong. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, you don't want you don't want to put stress on heating chambers or like I'm thinking on like the mighty and whatnot. Um, Most of our coolest pieces, I, I wanted to bring up the, the cool thing again, like uh, Troy was talking about how, how things look um, and, and how that contributes. Like, so at, at a point, I, we stopped being interested in, in how many perks there were and in how big it was into how it looked. Um, mm -hmm. And this is before we even started vaping. So we, we started going for more of the artsy pieces. Uh, so like... This is actually uh, belonged to a friend of mine. And hold on a second. Um, this belonged to a friend of mine, but he he told me to hold on to it for the for the time being. And it's you know, it's it was made by an American glass blower, and it's it's really pretty, and um, it's just got the little all those little details that make me feel like, ooh, I'm, I'm hitting like a, it almost looks like a vase, you know, you, you have it like mm -hmm. that and, and you could put flowers in it and it'd be really pretty. Um, I feel like that's what I'm looking for more in a piece now is, is something artistic, something different, um, something exciting. Cause there are so many pieces that look the same. And, and I feel like that's changed a lot. I've seen a lot more pieces that try to do something artful artsy um then and also marrying that with function there are a lot of cool pieces that try to include the that good functionality um while also <clears throat> making it look really really cool um yeah recyclers nowadays are super cool um something like this is like literally um and do you like the worked piece clipo do you like the the color and as opposed to clear glass um yeah i enjoy a little bit of color every once in a while um it it hides the dirtiness a little bit you can <laughs> you can kind of like push it a little bit longer than if it's if it's clear um that's my uh, issue honestly is i can't see how dirty it is <laughs> yeah. and i like to keep mine clean so I, it's funny um, that i really i like both of those pieces that you have um i have actually gone the opposite way i i'm more utility now i am looking yeah. for what i am looking for is can i clean it easy enough and how does it pull? Is it smooth? Does it chug? Which which does it have resistance? When I say chug, I mean do you have to pull harder? Um, how it bubbles, how it functions, to me is the most important thing. So, on my table right next to me, I have maybe fifteen or twenty pieces out. There is not one single colored piece. It is, yeah. They're all clear because I am looking at the function or the utility of it more so than. Is it worked or is it super fancy looking? Um, Same. I like I like the clear. I I, I want to know when my glass gets dirty, and I want to know when I need need to clean it. I, I do have some some like lightly colored glass, and sometimes I have like just like like oh it smells bad. I'm gonna go clean it, and then I dump it out, and I was like holy shit, there's like chunks floating yeah. around. No, they're yeah. in the sink. It's like I if I'd have known that, I would have would have cleaned it sooner. I do like the clear. Yes. Uh, this is my favorite piece. For, for dry air vapes. It has an 18 millimeter joint. Has a What I like about the 18 millimeter joint is it's very easy to step down to a 14. 
you know, with a very small piece of glass. This is millimeters of glass. Uh, this is the Seed of Life percolator. This is a, a DH gate piece from China. I paid $68 for this like three or four years ago. Uh, now the the person who makes it is only doing wholesale and you can buy it from calibear.com for like 140 bucks, which is still a good price. Uh, this, the Seed of Life perk is really smooth. It's not very chuggy at all and it does a really good job of percolation. This also has the Swiss perk. This is called the Swiss perk up, up on top. And it's not super functional with the water, but what happens is as I hit it, the, the bubbles get intermingled with the, the Swiss percolation up here. And it makes the bubbles extend much higher up the, up the bong. And I actually have a Swiss piece too, a Swiss perk piece. And, and just so we can help people understand the terminology. So this one actually has a little purple hue to it. That's the most color I have on any piece. Um, but essentially, I thought that was a great demonstration poking that through there, Troy. Um, essentially, what Troy is saying is, is these slots or holes or whatever are helping the percolation. And these are truly like double percolated devices that you, you have the, the percolation on the bottom that the bowl is coming down into um, down here. Um, but the walls of the glass itself are actually helping the bubbles move and aerate the device. So it is, this would be considered a Swiss perk and, and then something else on the bottom. Troy is sea to life. Uh, this is like a UFO or a circle perk in this one. I've heard them call, yeah, UFOs. Um, but they're both, part. it's it's really the same. It's it's yeah. kind of where, like, West Coast is going to say one thing, East Coast, exactly. it's, it's, it's that, but they're truly I mean, the same things. Exactly. Um, a lot of, and, a, there's a lot of term, there's a lot of terms, um, like, shared with different names. Um, absolutely. I have like a little double, list here, like, in fact. Du like, double, like, having, like, a double walled pipe and um, I think the seed of like life that. was a, a geometric laser cut pattern. Like the, it was like mm -hmm. a, a flower shaped pattern that was laser cut. And I forget all the specifics of it, but it does have a really nice feel. Like I, I, I bought into the hype and I was like, Oh shit, that does, it does feel really nice. And the, my first seed of life was the, the fab egg, like the, which is out of reach right now, but it's over there, which is also a Swiss perk. And the fab eggs, and, and th I mean, this is technically a fab egg. It's just a straight fab. It's like blown twice. It's like it, it's a piece within a piece. Mm -hmm. Or two pieces connected in a way where, where it becomes one again. It's a really interesting glass. Yeah, the double line walls is pretty cool. Um, the, uh, it's, re it's a really cool process. Um, um, I you gotta like you're like building in it from the inside out and it's really cool it's fun to watch that's for yeah. sure yeah <laughs> that, the seed of life is one of the newer perks right you would agree with that that and and we don't really see that in the industry too much it's it's rare that something new uh comes out like that because i think we do get that circle ufo shower head sort of thing um and and people throw those terms around to mean too many things almost. And I, th I think it's a rarity that a new perk comes out like that. And those Sea to Life ones are fantastic. I highly recommend them because they are so smooth, very low resistance. Yeah. Um, but before we moved on, Troy had said 14 millimeter. And I, I had a good demonstration here of 14 millimeter, 18 millimeter, just so people understand what we're talking about. We are talking about the, the diameter of these holes right here and I will hold these sideways so you can see more what I'm talking about. Why don't you drop um, some basics? Can you show eight, 18 and 14 male and female? Yes, absolutely. Um, so essentially what we are working mm -hmm. with here, actually, let me pick up that FC mod piece again. Cause that use your, it's it all in one shot. Use your pinky. Okay. Um, <laughs> use my pinky. <laughs> um, so essentially what we are talking about are the joints for every piece. Um, and, and this is a very good demonstration right here. So this is an 18 millimeter male. Uh, these are normally 
they're they're actually listed as 1922 or 1926. Um, what we are using is scientific glass, um, something you would find in labs for test tubes or beakers, things like this. And what they're describing is the diameter across here at the at the thickest point is 19 millimeter. 22 or 26 is the length of the ground glass. So they know the depth uh, uh, and all dimensions of the ground joint. So this is an 18 millimeter male joint or 19. Uh, a lot of times you'll see it listed as either 18.8 or 19.2. And it is really the same thing. What they're really talking about is the base dimension or base diameter down here, the thickest point. Um, so this would be an 18 millimeter female that connects to it. And so all joints are working the same. When I pulled these out, this is an 18 female on the top. This is a 24 millimeter joint. Uh, this ground joint right here is a 24 millimeter male. This is 24 millimeter female. So same premise all the way through these things. I don't want to break a piece of glass live. <laughs> um, so, and it's really just a variety of these things. We're, we're dealing with the same joints all over, which is what I really liked about this piece is I can take this ash, ash catcher and put it on any 18 millimeter male piece. Um, and they have adapters to adapt all these things. Um, 14 millimeter has become a heck of a lot more popular. That's a much smaller joint. Um, and, and once again, we're just dealing with the diameter across the joint. Um, I tend to, uh, Southie and I have talked about this before. I try to tend to stick to 18 millimeter joints. It's easier to taper down, um, put adapters into an 18 millimeter joint and go down rather than try to go up. Um, if you go up, I'm just gonna reach over and grab my glass adapters here. While you're doing that, uh, I, I do want to point out that we're coming up on 45 minutes into this one, so okay. Um, people in. So essentially, if if you're going to adapt something, I have a whole tray of glass adapters <laughs> here. Um, you're going to need to put something in a joint like that, so you're increasing the size almost inherently. And it's not the worst thing, but it's nice when your piece is lower than where you're hitting it from. Um, which is part of the reason I have a very long mouthpiece on the, the, the glass piece that I use most of the time. Um, so uh, these are the things you're going to be dealing with to go from 18, 14 to 18. And it, you're just adding height and a little complexity that you might not need in the piece itself. Um, um, and, and you can see from this tray that I've made, once you go down the glass road, you're going to need adapters like this. And, and I, I feel comfortable saying that all of us have some amount of adapters. And I'm just fortunate that I'm a woodworker and can make a little tray like that. But I think we all have these glass things laying around. Hey, yeah, one of my as a woodworker, do they make a, a step drill or a drill bit that is perfectly shaped like a, a glass joint so I could drill holes in a piece of wood that are perfectly shaped for a glass joint so I can make something like that? that holds that, like 300 of them? Absolutely. Cool. You, there's a variety of drill bits. Um, and, and thankfully that's a very common taper. Um, a, the taper is thick to thin or a wide diameter to a thinner diameter. And it's just a matter of finding what that taper actually is. Um, so it, it's these are very easy things to make. and. Personally, that has saved so much glass. Having a stand rather than just throwing them in my cabinet next to each other or trying to bubble wrap in individual pieces, that is, keeps my glass safe. Um, so I do recommend that to people. If you can stand them up and keep them separated, they will last yeah. a heck of a lot longer. Yeah, for real. Yeah, one of my first purchases was um, a bull rack um, straight from a hemp or a, a, like a one a shop. I asked them, mm -hmm. um, I want one of your displays. And they ordered me one. <laughs> so I got like, oh, I got a, a big display for bulls. But yeah, hey guys. It's, pretty, it's looking pretty empty right now. So um, go ahead. Sorry. Looks like we got a couple of people that uh, are ready to join in. Can you 
Yeah, let's Just open up the lines. What's up, Turkey? Hey, gentleman Turkey. Forrest. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, guys. Welcome. Hello. What's up, yo? So we had, we have asked these guys to come in today because they're pretty knowledgeable on the subject of glass. Um, and we had talked earlier in the week and both have experience and um, Forrest, what's your daily driver? Uh, my daily driver is actually might shock a lot of people. It's a beaker, just a standard beaker with an ice catcher and a down stem. That's for just for my SSV that I use because I like to milk it up. But my overall every day, like just for every other like a uh, flip brick, uh, flip brick or anything else, would be this uh, double shower head beaker. So. The. And you called it a double, and I've also heard that um, referred to as a stereo. Okay, yeah. I've, would would you call that one a stereo? No, because I've heard the stereo term for perks. Like that's the whole thing, like the Matrix, the stereo. Yes, uh, and I agree. I, I th and once again, I think this it's it's this industry. It, these terms are thrown around too interchangeably, almost. And oh, and that's geez. kind of the point of our show is to kind of bring it back and more demonstrate how we perceive it, even if we're vaguely wrong about it. it the yeah. perception of the customer is what's most important. Yeah, these are just our perceptions. Is, um, is some of this like what happens in the music industry where like somebody changes the sound, like, like oh, we're, uh, we're new metal, but then we did something different. So now we're, we're, we're gonna spell new with like a Z X or something, you know? Yeah. They, they, just, they change it, so then like they modify the name. Does that happen in the, in the glass space? Like, Oh, I did the matrix perk, but I doubled it. So it's a stereo matrix. Yeah. Um, from my understanding, you can't like, the only thing you can do is patent like the process to glass. You can't like patent like a perk. So like things like adding silver to the glass is patentable, but the perk is not patentable. Patentable. Um, are there are there a bunch of patents in the glass in the bong space? Are, are there? I know. I mean, like in the cannabis space, that happens with seeds and strains. Does it happen with bongs and and designs? I, and I believe so. I believe uh, Pure uh, has their own patent for their style of a uh, double hammer that they actually use. So don't oh. take my word on that, but I believe that their style it's trademarked for them and nobody else can sell underneath their name man i bet by the time i finish this sentence gentleman turkey could probably do some fancy google searching and be like actually <laughs> yeah um correct me if i'm wrong <laughs> so so i could i i won't go that deep into it but you got to be careful about mixing up uh patents and trademarks yeah um, trademarks so yeah, so trademarks are about the service mark that's used to um, call something or a service something else. Um, so the patent would be, to your point, Forrest, the hammer, that design, they might have a patent on that design for a specific purpose. Um, but my guess is generally in the bong industry, there probably aren't a lot of patents just because they're all kind of doing the same thing filtering air through water they're just using a different shape to do it so i got to imagine that would be pretty hard to patent but i'm sure there are some out there i'm sure there are some out there there's something unique enough where they can make a claim to it also patents are a timely and expensive process and i don't want to stereotype but i think a lot of people that are blowing bongs aren't aren't necessarily big in the the big business type of space i mean I, i'm just saying, speaking from going to champs you know three years in a row two twice a year meeting a lot of glass blowers they're very grassroots type of businesses usually yeah at least the ones that i, I talk to i'm sure there are some bigger ones but kenny that's deals also deals as good as your willingness to defend it right so like that's why somebody like like listen stores and bickle definitely has you know a lot of the volcano patented you know guaranteed um 
but there's a reason why they can patent the volcano because of the complexity of it, what it does, all these things, versus somebody that's going to try to patent a tube going into a glass ball. Yeah. It's a little different. I think the same thing. It's it's your ability to enforce that patent. And the people in this industry are, are they're doing it because they're passionate. It, it's an art thing. The, the vast majority, it's mm -hmm. an art thing. China pieces, clearly different. Huge production runs, clearly different. Good luck patenting those things. That's what I have found with my experience in this industry is you are trying to patent. So as Troy said at the very beginning, this stuff has been around for 2,400 years. This is not new technology. They're taking existing technology and, and applying it for our purposes, but it is not new technology. And I personally would be sad to see somebody try to enforce a patent uh, as far as glass in this industry. Yeah. Um, oh, that that would just shut things calling. down. Yeah, like, like uh, Kenny, you'd get mad if somebody was selling a wood vaporizer called the Sticky Brick. Now, you wouldn't enforce it because of your patent, but that goes to the trademark thing. And that's where I think a lot of it mainly goes, is people calling a volcano something, you know, that's not a volcano or this, a Sticky Brick that's not a Sticky Brick, that type of thing. Mm, I, I agree completely. That That's, uh, you know, I don't even supposed to own wood or wood vaporizer, but uh, the name, sure, sure. And, and, and to me, it's a respect thing. Uh, just, just respect and give no, no different than we, we, we know bud is kind of out of this industry, but yet we talk about them every stream or, you know, uh, you, you have to give respect to the people that, that are making them, uh, that are coming up with original ideas. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to the, to the art thing, because I, I love art. I'm an artist myself. My wife is a full-time artist. I, I very much see glass as an art and I, I respect the, the art space, like the people that are blowing $1,000, $10,000, $100,000 pieces. I love that shit. But at the same time, I'm a pretty strong buyer of, of China glass, like spending 60 bucks on a bong that I use daily and when I break, it's a utility, utility. I can replace it. I can buy two more. You know, I, I, I'm more of a China buyer. Uh, but at the same time, people in China got to eat too. And there are also artists in China. Like you can go on DHK and you can buy some fucking artsy pieces. And who's to say that those guys are not expressing themselves? They may not be the same type of passion in, this, in the exact same translation that you know, Joe Blow in, in Colorado was doing, but like the, the ML glass on DH gate, he does customs. He does expressive pieces. They're doing cool pieces. D damn straight. That guy's having fun doing it. It's better than some other factory job. You got to respect that. Yeah, of course. And go ahead for us. Sorry. I oh, know. Uh, in the sense of like the China and USA, there's always been that debate all the time like even in the forums we're having you know the debates of you know usa versus china which one is better quality you know there's going to be sides oh, i'm not saying argue. quality like, i yeah, i i know like, this is not as good as quality as like the mothership you know like my my fake fab egg that i paid 60 bucks for i know no. it's not going to be as nice as the real one for 1800 dollars. but it's the function like that's the whole thing is sometimes you look at a pretty piece you know of glass it's like oh, it's $300, and then you're just, you get it. You can't really test it out. Like, before, you know, all this was happening, certain stores down south would let you actually put water and actually test units out. But like, I don't think that's going to happen now far as doing that, but you could actually check the function of the water in the piece that you're buying. It may not be the exact level that you might like it in this, you know, when you bring it home, but you get to at least attempt to try it. Now buying online now, it's making it harder, you know, to get that perfect right, you know, rig or bong or whatever you need. So, yeah, the last time I bought uh, locally at the the head shop, I was able to you know put water in it and, and try it out. Uh, I'm not sure how they're doing it now. That's a good point. Uh, they also sell China stuff a lot, a lot at head shops as well. Oh, yeah. One Everybody. of the considerations, I think one of the considerations in the American or custom glass versus China thing, 
that we tend to not look at. It's it's not just a um, tight constraint thing. I agree with Troy. If you go buy a twelve hundred dollar piece and they have a copy of it on DH Gate, you're certainly going to get two different things um, as far as technical stuff. Did they carry out what it's trying to do? The other thing you have to consider is the type of glass, which we haven't truly touched on. And, and that is a huge consideration with China mm -hmm. glass is most American or, or custom glass blowers are using borosilicate um, of, of fairly good quality. Um, there's another type of glass that is essentially broken glass. It's called lime glass where they take um, all the old glass and smelt it essentially. And that is the vast majority of China glass pieces. And that is the consideration. It's, it's not always that in America, you're getting paid $50 an hour and Chinese are getting paid a dollar an hour, whatever it is. Sometimes it is the material that, that lowers the cost. So I do agree with Troy. I have met personally two China blowers that absolutely were artists. I think the general assumption is these are factories and they're putting out thousands of pieces at a time and forced to do it or something. That's not the case. That's not always the case. I think it's it's also really difficult to speak broadly about China glass because there yes. are very many, like I, I have seen some China glass where it's like, whoa, this is fucking different and this is fucking cheap. Like I, I bet I could smash this in my hand, you know, but not, and it's not, it's not all like that. Can there, anybody there are, tell there are me? There a bunch of China glass blowers that even use American borrow. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're, they're, they're even colored, like they, they import American glass and they still sell cheap bungs. Who can tell me which one of these is U.S. glass and which one of these is Chinese? There's one of each. Can we let's let's pin you there and get them closer a little bit. Let me so spotlight you. Try to hide any let me let me take a stab at this. OK. He's not going to base it on glass, though. He's going to base it on something different. So let me just say that from my glass blower, they from many glass blowers, they do say that once the glass is blown, it is very hard to tell what it is. In the tubing, they could pick it out. Uh, so what I am looking at is your down stems, um, the portion from the bowl down into the water. I'm I'm guessing the right hand is American glass. Yes. This one. Yes. You are incorrect, sir. All right, I this like is that. China glass. This yeah, I would, is American I would, glass. I would have said wow. That. So, but here's the thing. This is kind of a trick question. It kind of goes to what you guys were talking about. This is a mass produced piece from Grav Labs, who I think we all know is, you know, China Glass, right? Great recycler that was my daily driver until I got this. And this is the Brothership made in California straight fab. This is the second quality straight fab by Mothership, who is the B stock of Mothership. So, this is American blown glass that I got for the same price as China glass. Um, hmm. But it is American made. And you, if you were holding these, you'd be able to tell the difference. That's really the trick. This is a decent chunk heavier than this one is just in feel. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it is possible to get American blown glass for, you know, China glass prices, but you know, gotta make some concessions for it. Could you hold them both back up again? So what I was really looking at was how straight the down stem is coming down, the thickness of that base, which is not uncommon on the China pieces. I have found thick pieces on the China bases, but that glass looks pretty thick through the Zoom session yeah. anyway. And that's kind of what I was basing it on and a little bit on the recycler. So it's hard to tell from the angle. Is that actually recycling for you? Like, is it this feeding one? the water nicely? Yes. Yeah. So this is, a, this is why I got this one. This is a Klein recycler and I love the design of it. I love the function of it for a vaporizer because you can see how little water is in this piece. The rest of that is all dry. And this was mm -hmm. for my DynaVap for everything else, my daily driver until I got this guy. That's why I guessed, you know, that that was probably the American piece. I, I've gotten a couple recyclers from China and it tends to spit the water into the middle, not run it along the edge to actually make it recycle. And yours look like it was built right. And yep. <laughs> I, I have I have found with the China glass that they they tend to know what they're doing, but they don't tend to know the application. So they make these pieces based on pictures of things less than they use them. And to me, that is the biggest difference. When you buy from a custom maker, 
you can feel pretty assured that they actually use those pieces. That's a pretty big difference. Yeah. Can we see those in action, Turkey? Sure. I, can you can you just draw on it to see it bubble? Yeah, just the yeah. yeah. It's a quick draw. Next time we play so... the guessing game, let's let more people guess. Because <laughs> <laughs> the perk of this one looks handmade. I was gonna guess this one yeah. as well. Yeah, American the perk the perk of the other one looked manufactured and assembled by the same person every single time. This one looks mm -hmm. like it's like a little bit crafty. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I like the first one better, that's for sure. I understand. Forest are all your pieces American glass or custom glass? Uh, no, they're actually uh, China glass. All of them? Well, except for one. This one. Okay. Okay. That's the only one and... that's a USA glass, they say, but it was from a uh, smoke shop, and you're never really sure with them as well. I think that's a very fair answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking on that, I was in a, I was in a smoke shop where they had a big fucking sign in front of their their place that said we only sell USA glass. And literally when I was in the back of the store and, and I was like just looking around and he was like, he's like, what do you look for? I'm like, I'm looking for the cheapest thing possible. He goes, Oh, the China glass is right over here. And he's like, this one's 30 bucks. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, it, it, there was like no in investigation needed. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking for something cheap. This is over here. So was like, what piece are you using? You you pretty much use one one straight glass piece and one hydro tube. Is that right? Pretty much. I use, and I don't even know what model it is or anything because I got it secondhand. But it's a uh, honeycomb perk, uh, and I just like it because it you can just rip it super free flowing, not a lot of resistance to it. Nice and sturdy. Got this little guy that's supposed to help keep water from getting into my mouth. But. I hit it too hard sometimes, so it doesn't always <laughs> work. And then I've got uh, the sticky recycler from Hydro Tube, which that was a setup. <laughs> yeah, I know. What you didn't know is that I, I need to get uh, that PBW so I can soak it to get it really clean because it's just having a tough time with that recycler getting. Mm -hmm. Well, what I should say is I'm too lazy to sit there and hold it <laughs> while it soaks or whatever uh so yeah i ordered some tv ebw so i could uh just let it soak in a bucket overnight or something i we were talking about that before utility versus pretty um carrots had brought that up and actually the pc pulled out i i bet that's super easy to clean isn't it carrots yeah absolutely um and yeah, because it's just it's just a straight tube. It's it's just the down stem into the water. Um, yes. But it's also colored glass, right? So the piece that I was holding up earlier is colored glass. Like you can't really tell how dirty it is. It's pretty nasty in there. But it's mm -hmm. like I haven't used it in a long time because I don't smoke anymore, and I only use this for smoking. Um. So. I was going to bring up the, the nicest piece that I have just because we're talking on the subject is, is this one. It's, it's American made. It's, it's very nice, but I really wish that I had tested it in the head shop before taking it home because I, when I was using it for smoking, I didn't notice it as much, but I was like, Ooh, I have this really nice bunk. I could use this now that I'm vaping. I, I could, this is like, it's a great, it's small, you know, relatively small perks. I was like, it's great but it has such a tight draw. Mm -hmm. I have to pull pretty hard. Um, and it's not enjoyable when I put a vaporizer on it. Like, like if I wanted to use the Terra, for example, um, that tightens the draw a little further. So then it's just... 
Mm. Oh, that's barely bubbling. Like, yeah. It almost it almost hurts to to try to pull through that. And that sucks. so I don't I, I don't use this. Like it's it's pretty. I I like it. I'm also curious. Do you, what these these perks? Let me just focus a little bit. That's wow. super interesting. Um, Have you seen those before? Like a, um, is it a pearl necklace perk? Something yeah, like that, that. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Um, That's what it looks like. Definitely <laughs> what I would be calling it from now on. I have not <laughs> seen anything like that. I to haven't be seen anything like that. No. Does it spin the water in any way when you're actually chugging it? Like the water, does it spin? It doesn't spin. It just comes out Straight of each, out, the... yeah. out of each little hole. Um, it's hard circle. to get the water to go back. This is actually really hard to clean um, because there's very little backflow um, from circ into the stem, and so the and there's also very little flow from from here into this one. So, like I said, it's really tight. And so that makes it even harder to clean if I'm trying to get everything kind of flowing through there to try to get it really nice and clean. Um, it takes a lot. Like this, this is the cleanest I've gotten it in in a long time, and um, and it's still it's still got some residue in there. So what are you well, cleaning? Like what are you using to clean? Because I've been trying to go down this homemade route because ISOs being you know short in demand now and i've came across a few things that might interest the, the panel of uh, simple white vinegar and salt does a good job and uh also if you don't mind using acetone and salt is another uh, solution as well how long are you doing the vinegar or salt thing uh, Are you shaking it, or can you give us a little I, more info on that? Like I'm, I leave it in for about thirty minutes, and keep shaking and shaking and shaking during that time, and then cleaning with hot water, you know, tap water as hot as you can, or and then just cleaning it out, or you can, if you do have ISO, to mix a little bit of ISO and your white vinegar together, as well. Hmm. Oh, if you have ISO, ISO and salt is, is fucking magical. Yeah, and, but and you ISO, can save it. Yeah, the ISO and vinegar can actually stretch out your ISO usage. So you'll cut down on the amount of ISO that's needed. So instead okay. of ISO, the amount of ISO you would need for like a really big uh, piece, use white vinegar. And people have done this? Yeah. Do you, you do this? Yeah, it's, it's not gonna like make clean. chlorine and like no no no. I just, want, I just want to make sure that we're no, not trying to make mustard gas over here. Yeah, <laughs> I have not I have not tried vinegar, but now I kind of want to try it. <laughs> I've heard I've heard of people. Um, we would uh do the quick ISO wash and then we would um wash it in vinegar afterwards, and then wash it in water. So. I have heard of people using vinegar. Um, oh, I have yeah. not heard of. Sorry. I have not heard of people um, mixing it with ISO. So that's interesting. Really, it's a classic glass cleaner, like because it evaporates quickly. That's what that's what alcohol. I mean, I, I use alcohol as a glass cleaner. Yeah. I used to somebody use all those in glass the glass cleaners. Sorry, getting some. Um, oh, it's okay. Somebody in the yeah. chat said they are using um, Everclear. And I've tried that myself. Um, somebody gifted me a bottle of moonshine and I tried it out and it, it does work fantastically well, but it will light on fire and that does scare me. And I, I think a point that we need to make with people um, as we talk about cleaning and chemical reactions and things, um, you're most likely to get 70% ISO, which is 70% alcohol, 30% water. Um, Otherwise, you're probably buying 91%. Is that right? Can somebody yeah, confirm 90, that? 91% off available. the shelf, which well, is not ignitable. That is why that is available in stores, because it's still not ignitable. 99% ISO is. Are you sure? I'm not positive. I don't think you can light 
91% on fire, though. You're I don't party on fire. I don't, I don't want to do uh, bro science, so say it again. I, I've, 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 I swear I've, I've used it to try to light charcoal, but it burns off too quickly. I was just saying you can light Bacardi on fire, which is like 151, right? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so absolutely. Why, and that's only 75% alcohol. Why wouldn't you be able to light 91%? I think, well, maybe so I, I think, am entirely wrong with that. I, I don't know. I've never tried. <laughs> I've never tried myself. Basically, what they say is anything above 91%. Part of the reason why they don't sell it is that you get diminishing returns on its ability to disinfect. So 91% for what they sell it for is really the maximum that concentration they want because anything more than that and you're actually making it worse as a disinfectant because it evaporates too quickly. Excuse me, too quickly. Hmm. Um, when you have the higher percentage of alcohol in the ISO, it evaporates qu uh, quicker. Um, and so that's why at 70%, it'll actually last a lot longer. Um, but the cost but, to make it 99% alcohol is, is much higher than it is to make 91%. If it's 50 proof. Mm -hmm. That's why, uh, or it's 50%. 100, 100 proof is the flammable tick mm -hmm. so 50 percent alcohol is flammable hmm. 50 percent alcohol that's interesting well, this one says 80 percent on ask men i was gonna say because my 70 percent <laughs> is not lighting and it just made me think that my 70 percent is not 70 percent yeah it is not lighting though <laughs> okay well let hmm. me i have some 91 percent well, before we lights easy. Science. Okay, Jake. Yeah. Jake says ninety-one percent lights easily. Okay. I, yeah, I, I mean, know. I've seen there's... somebody light their face on fire with lit uzo, so I'm pretty sure. That yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Yep. Um. So right. and then we to are get fact back checking the cleaning five. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I love it. I, I yeah. want to be fact checked. I want to <laughs> be called out, and I don't want bad information out there. Good. That's good. awesome. Um, so clean using hot coffee. Somebody just said it. I, that now that I'm going to have to try on principle alone I, just because I love coffee. If I can get my glass tasting like coffee, I'm kind of down with that. <laughs> I think, I think some people were doing that with, uh, uh, yeah, put some cream in the coffee and swirl around and, and then drink it, pour it back in your cup and drink it. That way you get mm -hmm. the, whatever THCs in there. So it works the, like with your with your stem, you can use like your your glass stem to like stir your your hot tea, lamp. your hot coffee. Yeah, yeah, if there's yeah. some, especially a dab rig. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. um, you gotta, dab rig is... you gotta have some cream in there though. You gotta have some fat yeah. to absorb the THC. You don't we'll just want this it floating around. Up, this brings up a a topic. A uh, topics, Ninety-one is lamp. Yes, star particles cool. just really laid it. Ninety-one percent is lamp fuel. And I should have known that actually, because I have that. I have a I have a cooking stove that, that uses ninety one percent alcohol. I should have known that. So so how so, uh, so we're talking about cleaning uh, a piece with with ISO. Typically, when people are cleaning with ISO, they are not using whatever they clean out. But that is something that a lot of people do is gather their reclaim, right? So what? So um, using the coffee, using the, um, but using some kind of fat and, and why, so why is that Troy? The, does the fat, fat absorbs THC, correct? The fat makes it bio absorbable or I forget the fucking terminology right now. I didn't know you were gonna spring that on me. Sorry, <laughs> it's, um, it breaks it's, it down. James would know it, it makes it more, uh, it's why you add, Less a thin or whatever to edibles to, to make it, it yeah. is the bioabsorption or whatever it is. Like so basically, you, or something like that. Yeah, biosolubility, I think, is, is what it is. Something like that. Yes. Whatever. All right, I'm we'll not go with that. Doctor. <laughs> we'll go with bio, um, biosolubility. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it just helps di digest the THC through your cannabinoid system. The cannabinoid system. Yeah, it helps your body, your body actually absorb the THC. Yeah. Does it, Bioavailability. Does it, Thank you. Bioavailability. Yeah. Bio Thank you, Ivan. 
Yvonne, Sorry. I'm not sure if it's Ivan or Yvonne, <laughs> but bioavailability, that's the word we were looking for. Nice. Makes it a, 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 a possible thing for your body to be like, hey, we can do this. Um, I always thought ISO, I mean, we used to make ISO, we used to use ISO, you get it, you'd get it really dirty and then you would du double boil it off and then you would make basically a, a sludge to, to smoke. Um, it didn't taste good. It wasn't the greatest high, but it was free. <laughs> um, that's why I've always used ISO or why I've always thought we used ISO um, was that it was an easy way to harvest the reclaim. Um, but since legal or since um, things are a little bit more easier to get or up here, um, I'm, not interested. I'm not interested in, in yeah. it. Um, Same here, man. People, people give me shit for it all the time. Like they watch, they watch me in a stream or watch me in a video and they're like, you can scrape all that stuff and dab it. What are you doing? Throwing it away. And it's like, hey. I'm sorry, but. I live in California where I can go out and, and get a gram for $18 and it's yeah. not bad. This yeah. stuff that's I'm pulling out of my mighty, I've dabbed it before and it's not good. It's like nowhere near good. Like I don't want it. Like the, the high might be good if it's the only thing I have. Like, you know, if I lived in Illinois or Wisconsin or something and I, and I couldn't find anything else and it's like, oh shit. I need I need my medicine. I gotta find something. I'll scrape up my mighty. Yeah, but absolutely, cannabis is. Um, I consider it like the buffalo of, like like you can eat like the buffalo of the plant world. <laughs> you can use everything if you really need to. <laughs> well, it's very true. In, in a lot of cultures, they're every uh, the the buff everything is the buffalo. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I mean. Like and the Chinese people waste nothing. Yeah. And they eat everything. Yeah. Um, and there's I, some people here that do the same. Yeah. I tried okay. to do the reclaim thing from Reddit. I think I took it and put it in a flat Pyrex tray and tried to evaporate it and put it on a heating blanket and hit it with a blow dryer. I did everything. The taste never went away. That's, yeah. it just still had that ISO taste a little bit. And yeah. I, and I really just did it for sport. I'm not big on scraping and trying to use it. I just want my pieces clean. Um, mm -hmm. But I had to try it for science once. And yeah, it's to me just not worth it. Mm -hmm. What about what about piece water? If, if you're not going to use it, if it's not worth it, but you just want your piece clean, have you used piece water to try to do that? Or... Uh uh, I, I've similar. used both. I, I've I've used the piece water is something that you're putting in, and I actually have a bottle right here. Um, piece water is something that you're gonna fill your bong with, and you're not mixing it with water. Although I, it seems like Forrest, you've had success, like fifty fifty mix or so. I've heard. Yeah. Of people, yeah. Like the only reason is to thin it out because it is kind of gummy of consistency. Like yes. When when it you get a few like you can't the instructions say do not shake which is kind of weird for something that is supposed to be a fluid it actually Very viscous. Up. yeah mm. it turns white i don't know if you guys can you see the cloud in there yeah. i don't know if you can see that but just bit, yeah. that by itself considering by this is a brand new unopened bottle by shaking eh. it yeah yeah but you got it from it's, shaking it yeah if he shakes yeah. it right now, it'll foam up. Like, so my understanding yeah, of what, so my my understanding of what piece water is is it's a plant material, right? It's oil. It's it, it's like mineral, a, a mineral oil, fruit oil, a uh, fruit extract and vegetable extract. Yeah, you know, but it still it still feels like a mineral oil. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've, it, I've just yeah. found the piece water to have a bit of a flavoring that I really don't enjoy. 
that has been my biggest thing with the peace water is it just has a bit of a plasticky taste to me or something that yeah. i that's why it makes and, it and, half water and that's why a lot of it because i use the clear glass the visual once you uh, you can see peace water working that is the nice thing is when you use it with concentrates or anything you watch the peace water keep the dirty parts but it really keeps the dirty parts and it looks your piece looks very dirty after one day it looks like milk yes Yes. So, so recently, um, I've been trying more of, uh, this is like res block. Um, this is actually called <laughs> holy water. <laughs> um, but it's the same premise and it's just a few drops in water and, uh, no added flavoring or none that I've mm -hmm. noticed. And I've actually tested it out this week and it does seem to be working. It's I normally, I would change water every day and a half, every two days or so, and then thoroughly clean the piece once a week. And I don't really need to clean my piece this week, just change the water. So the res block, not, that, that seems to be a good solution. I have some res block as well. I have a yeah, it, does it look like, I've never actually used the res block. I'm saying that, no. does it have that orangish tint to uh, it? No. My, my res red. block is in a white bottle, so I don't know. Okay. It's okay, red. so this is a little different, I think. It's, a, but it's, same it's from the cranberry extract is why yeah. it's red. Yeah. And you can also just buy straight up cranberry extract and use that. And you're, yeah, in your mom. there's a certain acid that you get. It's some sort of citric acid. I forget what it is. It's basically what they make res block, I think, out of. It's like cranberry extract. And somebody in the, in the chat, I'm sure, mm -hmm. will know it. I have, some res some... I have some on the shelf, but I don't want to turn my camera off. I'm going to go get it right now again. <laughs> but yeah, you that. can make it at home pretty easy. I did that for a while. But what I found is the trouble of, of making it or, and then the extra little, I would always get a little bit of like a weird little tinge of flavor to it. I prefer just changing my water every couple of days. And it's Same. like, it was, that's it. Like I'm fine with that. I never, I never got into the peace water as well. Uh, they sent me a couple of bottles and okay. I, I, I never tried it with adding water to it. I, I will try that, but I thought it was too thick. Like it, it, it took my perfectly flowing seed of life percolator and made it not perfect anymore. Mm -hmm. Like maybe if I had a per have a perk that was too open, and putting this the the this uh, peace water in it, peace. maybe then it would like to tone it down and make it. Oh, this is this is how I like it now. But now the way if it's perfect, it, it fucks it up. I I've just kind of come to the conclusion that I like fresh water, so I'd rather just change my water every day and water. clean the piece Hot and. Water. That's it. Hot water, right? So, so you brought and, up, you, you bring that up. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, one thing that Southie said, and I just wanted to show people, he had said PBW. Um, and so I have a huge bottle of it that I use pretty darn often. And um, let me get a little closer there. So I believe that's per professional brewer's wash. Am I right? I think. <laughs> um, pubic? No. Pubic brewer's wash. For you, it is, or you California Public. people, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, so I tested this out years ago. This was something that I had found on Fuck Combustion, I think. Um, and it does work really well. Uh, so this is a powder for those of you that want to see it. Um, yeah, that's not going to show. It. Oh, there we go. Um, it's White just powder. powder and maybe a couple tablespoons and a cup of water. Um, I've had better success uh, using a five gallon bucket and filling it up maybe three gallons and actually submerging the pieces. Um, so every part is covered. I think um, Southie raised a good point with, with my recycler actually, that the more tubes and things you have, the harder it's gonna be to clean. So if you can submerge these things and not really do anything, you're gonna be more successful. Um, the one thing with the PBW is it will leave kind of white etched marks on your piece if you don't wash it off thoroughly. So it is something you either want to do it quick and shake it for a minute and then wash that piece out or let it soak entirely and then wash it off as soon as you pull it out of your bucket or soaking uh, from soaking, I should but say. If you will extended soaking also make it white or no, no. Okay. What it okay. is, is, is like, if you fill this piece up to here, you will see the rim of where you filled it to. Okay. 
right? So if you fill the whole thing and it's entirely covered, you will not have that issue. And as long as it's wet, it's pretty much just fine. It's like where it's drying right there. What about pieces that, that will gather bubbles as you put them in? Like you might have to like rotate it around a few times to make sure all the bubbles come out. If you're That's soaking. exactly it. Just, just rotate it every five, 10 minutes or something. And bad pieces I've soaked for 24 hours. Most of my pieces, because I clean often, five minutes and you are good to go just a hot quick hot water rinse and you are good to go and and i and really this goes to our times right now we're dealing with the virus and iso is a little hard to find i'm pretty much always choosing iso it's it's faster easier quicker um the one good thing about pbw is it is environmentally friendly it is not good to pour alcohol down the sink and into our water system and i try to be conscious about that i tend to clean and pour my ISO back into a jar and reuse it pretty often. I've been, I've been trying um, PB, to do that ever since you talked to me about that, by the way. PBW is environmentally friendly. Same thing with acetone. Uh, Forrest, you brought that up earlier. And I've used acetone uh, on my pieces, so I'm with you. Um, they do recommend that acetone not touch your skin more than twice a month, though. And that, that's something to consider. Use rubber gloves or something if, if you're using it a little more regular. Wow, that's good to know. I should tell my kid, my kid that because she's fingernailing it up with the acetone constantly. Yeah. 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 Just have her be a little conscious about that. It would rub off any logo that you have. Acetone would. It depends about, on the logo. I don't know about any. Oh, okay. Okay. There, there, are, there are ways to make them make those logos stay on there for much longer. They can be like embedded in the glass nowadays. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, Jake J in the cool. YouTube chat brought cool. up Alkanox. And Alcanox. so we're, we're about to experiment with that. I have not personally purchased that yet, but that's I'm the same. It. Yeah. It, it was Forrest. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. I knew I was talking to somebody. So I'm going to mail Forrest like half of my PBW and he's going to mail me half the Al Alkanox. So nice. You know, and, the, and and what Jake said is Alkanox uh, is lab grade glass and hardware cleaner. Um, mm -hmm. And same idea. It's a grainy powder that you're going to put in there. Um, the PBW is actually good for silicone whip tubing. That That's part of the reason why I like the PBW is you can clean silicone. That is what it's made for. Oh, nice. So I'm going to have to oh. like, mix up a bucket because I, I bought some PBW. I'll have to mix up a bucket of it and, and just like keep it around. And you can just keep that bucket there it's like it's not going to go bad after no. a day or a month I, or i kept a five gallon bucket for a month and it's it's works mm. better when the water's hot that's the only problem with doing it like that is the water is going to cool off a little faster and it does work quicker faster uh, okay it's hot water but yeah i have no problem leaving it around and we've actually used it as cleaner uh we we clean our sinks or the counter with it <laughs> all right so hot hot water works better but hot water hot water burn baby Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask for a little bro science. So I might be intruding. Could that work in a dishwasher? B B -B uh, so I I put PBW in, my, in our dishwasher. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Surprise! For brewing equipment all the time. You can use it for it, anything. I use it for brewing equipment. Let me just say, though, right, that, yeah, you can clean your dishwasher out with it. You should be very careful about the things you're putting in the dishwasher with it, right? Good silverware, it's going to come out super clean. Your glasses are going to come out super clean. Ceramic, super clean. Stainless, you got to be a little careful with the grade of stainless that you use PBW on. We had some knives, and now whenever we pick up the knife, it's leaving a black mark on my hand. What? Whoa. Like, car like carbonized it or what? what the yes, it did something, right? So, and it actually says on the bottle what you can and cannot use it with. And it turned out that I should have read the bottle before I put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> There's a lot of words in that bottle and the label peels off. Yes, yes. So just, just be a little careful on the metal products you're using it with. They're, they're fairly specific with that. And it, it's been years. I thought I could, I put like silver cleaner back on the knife thinking I could maybe recondition it or something. Nope. Every time you touch it, it turns your hand black. So we had to get rid of it. <laughs> Chemi chemical reaction happened or something. Yep. That's it. That's it. So, um, but it is a good cleaner. Having said that, PBW is a very good cleaner. I, I do recommend it. I, I like that it's environmentally friendly. Nice. Non toxic. 
dark crystal somebody sammy recommended or mentioned dark crystal i've been using dark crystal with my quartz yes it works, it works amazing it works amazing and it also got my dynavap tip super clean like my green anodized tip i, I had soaked that in 99 percent iso for like days and the only thing that would would take the the stains off of it would be uh, st- uh steel wool and i was scared to steal wool my anodized tip so I just left it stained. The dark crystal took it off in 20 minutes. And, and all, all the only thing I had, had to use was one of these stores and Bickle brushes. Like I just, I literally mm-hmm. just, I soaked it in a little shot glass. I pulled it out and I, and I started brushing it and the stains just wiped off. Wow. Dark crystal. Dark crystal. Wow. It was like $8 on Amazon. And it's not toxic. It's made, I forget what it's made out of. I think... I think we're we're coming up to to trying to wrap up some things. Um, if it, it unless we want to keep going, um, we'll we'll be continuing our conversation um, with with whoever wants to join us afterwards. Um, but I wanted to just make sure that there was the that there were other things that didn't get said, um, things that we didn't talk about as much. Any final thoughts? Um... I want to shout out my the glass blower who made this since it is an American blown piece, and I, I gave so much props to to China Glass and I love China Glass and I love DH Gate. Uh, this is blown by AJ Glass to mouth. I, I when it, when as soon as the 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 guy at the shop said his name, I'm like ah oh, I gotta I gotta buy from this guy. That is a great <laughs> name with a, with a name like Glass to mouth. It's got these nice little flower marbles i'm not sure if they show up or not but there's two there's one underneath and there's mm-hmm. one. so it's it's technically heady it's it's made all by by glass tube no no pre-joints involved which i think is the definition of, of heady technically but nice and simple still clear my little dab rig until the real came along mm-hmm and uh shelved it now the rio is my main dab rig which is not not american alone but i think the the uh base is american made anyway close it out carrots sure um uh yeah any for just any other thoughts before before we go yeah i uh i think we might need to revisit this because there is a bunch of stuff that we did not touch on yet. I think we uh, need a part two later on. I, I think well, I think we should leave it up to our viewers and, and see if they would like a part two. I, I personally would would have loved to touch on the perks and the styles a little bit more. We didn't even um, talk about glass nipples. If, right. Nipples, the balls. We did we didn't really yeah. Glass, there's there's um, we, had, we had a pretty broad subject outline today and we I bet we only touched on half of it. So if yeah, people right. are interested, we'd I would be happy to do this again. I had a lot of fun. Also, uh, let's get some uh, discussion in the forums about yeah. the different subjects. You yeah, know, totally. Just yeah. to make um, it a little bit more open. Well hashtag hashtag vape church or hashtag glass or there's a, a topic looking for vape church topics. So okay. post some ideas. Yeah. Post some ideas there. And then yeah, we're, we're always looking for ideas. We, we have a, a plan for a few weeks out, but, but we're, we're trying to build onto it. Right. So it, if, if maybe if, we, if this turns into a glass uh, series, you know, if we, we have multiple glass episodes where we try to touch on something specific. Oh, we will. Then um, that'll, yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that. I, hopefully, people on the forums can discuss that. And give us give us some thoughts. Give us your thoughts, people out there that are watching. Um, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for chilling <laughs> with us um, and bearing with us through our through our uh, discussion. Um, please, please join us. I I I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're gonna. Um, after we close this down, we'll join the the watch party Zoom. Yeah, um, if people want to, obviously, um, and that that is on Discord. Um, so I I think I think you can just go to Discord and join that Zoom and and come talk to us. Um, contribute on the forums. That that's where we're getting a lot of our conversation pieces from. That's where we're building a lot of our discussion points. 
it's from. So if, if you want to get involved with that, just head over to the forums. Um, yeah, so, sorry about my camera. It keeps uh, Whoa. doing something funny. It went dark. Um, <laughs> <don't know> <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, um, we're, we want to hear your questions. We want to hear your thoughts. Um, you can also see us at uh, Vape, Vape Church has an Instagram. It's, it's uh, unfortunately, Vape Church was already taken. So we're Vape underscore church. Um, but go find that. And uh, it might be me. I, I may have snagged it. Like, no, no, really it's a, it's a oh, okay, um, okay, good. It's like an e uh, e juice vapor. Okay, uh, okay. from China. Has, I has you were gonna say it was Vix. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> hey, what about Claypo's corner? Yes. Um. Clipo. So, I today I was gonna read a quick haiku again. All right. Yes. Um. For those who don't know, we have a haiku thread on the forums going. Feel free to jump in there and, and post your haikus. We always like to, to see what kind of... Um, Maybe I'll read a couple. Yeah. Um, then... Okay. Yeah? Yeah, and then are you going to explain the giveaway? Oh, yeah. You want me to do that? Um, uh, okay. Sorry. I'm, I'm super tired. <laughs> okay, so our first haiku is by David four o or o four o eight, and it's a um, it's go it goes Trump. Or, oops, sorry, shit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Trump's fault, you may say. Change the world, or change should have. Uh, sorry. I'm not very good at reading haikus, apparently. Um, Trump's fault, you may say. Change should have came, come along, come long ago. Scorn the ones you choose. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm not very good at this. All right, man. Take a deep <laughs> breath. Give your wiener a pinch and <laughs> exhale. Take read another one. Um, one from one from early girl says, "Dang crap, two days sad, found wrapped, two two dabs. Oh my, crickets rain, drops split, drops bliss." And for early um, girl being bankrupt. Yeah. Thanks, early girl, uh, for sharing that one. That was some nice, some nice uh, prose in, in that haiku thread. And thanks, from, David. One from Maybe. session, one from session create. It says, um, "Eyes lift, I'm awake. Hands reach for the weed and vape. Time to wake and bake." Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah, <laughs> I like that a and, lot. <laughs> I think that was my here, favorite one of the week. Here's yeah, one nice. from Sticky Bricks Labs. Uh, the last <laughs> one, two G's. Two SSV forty threes, and the winner is me. Um, <laughs> me. Yeah. me would have been six, is... and I couldn't put it in there. <laughs> the <winner is. laughs> so yeah, you guys come out and participate in our haiku thread. We're having fun with that, and just join the forum. That's why I wanted to thank David. Actually, that was the first one Clipo picked, and he he's really been all over the forum. He participated in that glass thread quite a bit, and had a ton of great advice. Um, and I really appreciate it. So yeah, so you guys are making the forum a fun place. Yeah, Kenny, um, Kenny has uh, graciously offered to to donate a, a sticky brick to give away. Clipo, you wanna you wanna do you know the details? Do you wanna explain it? Or do you want me to explain it? So my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is we were gonna do a haiku probably we'll just I mean let's do it on that same page, maybe, or maybe we'll do a new not, thread. Then no, write it right make make a sticky brick related haiku in the haiku thread. Okay. Between now and next week in Vape Church. Okay. Um, so your best, re your best um, sticky brick related um, thing, and we're gonna pick it. We're gonna pick a live 
uh, winner. Um, we're going to send them out. Uh, I believe we wanted to do a live unbox, unboxing with them. And, uh, well, we can, we can figure that out after. We'll figure that out. Because we, yeah. the, if, the, if the person that wins, they may not want to do all if, that stuff. If they're we'll, willing to. We'll go, we'll, we'll, go, we'll go down that road when it, when it gets there. But yeah. write a, a sticky brick related haiku in the haiku thread and the 420 Vape Zone forums between now and next week. You have to follow the rules of the haiku thread still. So you have to write one haiku per post and you can't double post. So yeah. you can you can post multiple times, but you have to wait for somebody else to post after you. And then next I week- I messed that up. Uh, that's all right, everyone does. I, <laughs> I, I deleted a few mess ups already. Uh, make it sticky brick related. Yes, which means you have to use a sticky brick as a word or one of the models or, you know, make it obvious that it's a sticky brick thing. And we'll, we'll pick a winner next week. Yeah, uh, also keep your eyes build on the forum. I'm going to post a thread later tonight uh, what we're talking about next week, but it's going to just kind of be an overview of the basics of, of vaping and I don't know, kind of the, the things we wish we would have known before we bought our first vape when we were looking for our first vapes. So if you guys have anything that you want to hear about, make sure you chime in on the thread so we know what we can address for you. The nice. introduction to vaping should be fun nice. topic. Wonderful. Oh, and uh, I want to say my YouTube channel, 420 Vape Zone, just hit 30,000 subscribers yesterday. So thank Ooh. you all. Thank you all for, for being a subscriber and for being a, a follower. I, when I got deleted at like 12,000 <laughs> two years ago, I, I was so devastated. I'm like starting over from zero was, was so fucking hard. I thought I'd never even get back here. And uh, now I'm doubled in, or more. It's uh, it's amazing. And I want to thank everyone for that. It's a, it's a dream come true. For real. Congratulations, Troy. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats, Troy. You can tell. Well, I think with, with that, let's uh, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Turkey, for coming. Thank you, Forrest, for joining us. Um, thank you, Coffee, for taking care of things in the background. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the breakout room, we'll, or we'll see you next week, or see you in the forums. Wherever we'll yeah. see you, we'll see you. <laughs> I hope to see you somewhere. Watch right. party. Yeah. <laughs>